Hello and uh, welcome to the next episode in the adventures of Keridwen. And today's episode is called Family Values. Keridwen liked being on Anglesey, that she stayed at Penmont for a few days. One evening she was standing by the seashore looking across to Puffin Island and wondering to herself whether Dylan had found another Puffin to begin his family with. Then as the sun was setting something special happened. As she looked the sea became alive with a shimmering light. And just at that moment, Carwen, the dove who had welcomed her to Benmon, came by. She explained how thousands and thousands and thousands of tiny creatures were swimming by their bodies able to shine out. And because they lived together in such a huge group, they could put on a spectacular light show in the sea, just as Keridwen was seeing now. Carwin explained this didn't happen often, so Keridwen was seeing something very special indeed. The next day, Codwen decided to make her way back across the bridge from Anglesey and she headed into the hills. She followed a river that led up the mountainside to a spectacular waterfall. It was a very pretty place. The thorn trees were showing off their spring blossom and lots of insects were buzzing around with excitement. Karen also saw lots of humans walking along a path. She decided to avoid them by walking on the other side of the river. Watching so many humans copying each other reminded Keridwen of being back on the farm with all the other sheep. They too often crowded into the same space just like humans seem to do. Keridwen's climb went a long way beyond the waterfall and when she reached the highest point she looked to the south and although she could not see it from there she knew that somewhere in the distance was the giant's mountain and the farm on which she had been born and deep inside, Keridwen began to sob. A few days later, Keridwen came down the hills to a river called Afon Conwy. It was another beautiful spring morning and very quiet. Even the river had slowed down because the water there was deep. Keridwen stood really still to enjoy the silence. Then all of a sudden she heard splashing in the water. It was an otter family. The young cubs were playing together while their mother, Maya, looked on. Hello, 
said Keridwen. How many children have you got? Three, replied Maya. I've got a sister and a brother, said Keridwen. But I'm a year older than them. That explains why you're on your own, said the mother otter. No, it doesn't, said Keridwen, and she began to cry. I didn't mean to upset you, said Maya, and they began to talk about Keridwen losing her family and how sad that had made her and how she was still searching for them. I think, by now, my mother will have forgotten me, said Keridwen. Never, replied Maya. Good parents never forget their children. They sometimes have to let them go, just like I will have to do next year. But we don't ever forget them. This reassured Mother carried when. Do you mind if I stay here a while, she asked. It's nice to be with a family together. Of course, replied Maya. But don't be surprised if we disappear when humans come. We are never too sure what they are up to. After all, she continued, Humans have been messing about with the river for many years and it's not always a very safe place to be. And the mother otter went on to explain the ways in which the river was affected by the things humans do. For one thing, she said, ever since humans put a different kind of tree on the mountain sides. There has been too much acid in the water. It's like swimming in vinegar. I think those trees are called conifers, suggested Keridwen. The ones with very thin leaves. Leaves that don't disappear in the winter. It feels very different when you're walking through a forest of those trees, she went on. Too quiet. The older woods, with lots of different trees, are a much more interesting and happy place. They provide a home for many more birds, plants, and insects. When creatures are allowed to look after the countryside, it kind of takes care of itself, doesn't it? She concluded. Humans, of course, another problem, added Maya. All this flooding. We have had to move home plenty of times in recent years. On the other hand, she continued, some of my friends say humans might have realised some of the mistakes they have made. There's even a rumour that they might let beavers live on the river again. Things will really change for the better if that happens. Beavers are excellent engineers. The dams they build help keep the water clean and they slow it down and they do all of this without stopping any other creatures making their way up the river or down the river. When beavers are with us, the whole river becomes a happier place to be, like the woods you described. How true that is, thought Keridwen to herself, as she watched Maya swim off towards her cubs 
and feed them. That made Hewidwen feel hungry herself. So she went off to nibble at a patch of grass. It's much more interesting when lots of creatures live in the same place, thought Keridwen later that day, as she found a place to rest for the night. I miss my family, but like Maya, I haven't forgotten them, and they won't have forgotten me either, she added, pleased that Maya had reminded her of this. The evening was as quiet and as still as the morning. The otters were out playing again as Keridwen spoke to the night sky. Tonight she wondered if any of her family had begun looking at the stars. If so, she thought to herself, although we may be far apart, the night sky brings us together. With that, Cadwen drifted into sleep, comforted by a dream poem in which her family were stargazing too. Thank you for listening to that episode. And as previously, I invite you, if you wish to, to write the kind of poem that Keridwen might have dreamt, dreamt that night, a day on which she'd been sadder about losing her family, but where she'd learnt also that families that love each other never forget, and how that was a comfort to her. So, until the next episode, when Keridwen is going to meet some smelly friends, I'll say thank you for listening.